Uh, I'm with Professor Rafael Fernandez de Castro of ITAM in Mexico City, uh, who has uh, important expertise on an issue that is critical for Latin America today, the issue of security in general, of violence in particular. Uh, Professor Fernandez de Castro, could you comment on the role security and violence are playing in the Americas today? Of course, uh, thank you for, for the opportunity to, to express my, my experience and my, what I have learned working for the UNDP, the United Nations Developing Program. We're developing a report on citizen security throughout Latin America. And unfortunately, I have to say that Latin America has become the single most violent region in the world. We Latin Americans, we represent around 9% of the world's population, and we concentrate close to 30% of the world's homicide. Uh, that can tell you, I mean, how violent Latin America has uh, become. And uh, why Latin America has become so violent is, is not easy to explain. But let me tell you something. Uh, in the last few years, Latin America has done very well, economically speaking. Uh, most of Latin America didn't suffer much because of the big 208, uh, 2008 crisis, 2009 uh, economic crisis, because we have some fundamentals. We learned in the 1980s, in the 1990s, and now Latin America economy has done well. Also, in addition to that, places like Brazil, they've been able to reduce power, poverty in dramatic ways. So Latin America has done well economically and in social justice. But at the same time, violence has increased in Latin America. So why is that? Well, it has to do, I will say, with four related issues. Number one, state capacity. In Latin America, in most countries of Latin America, we don't have judicial institutions. We don't have uh, institutions uh, we don't have uh, a very important rule of law, and that is affecting Latin America. And basically, in most Latin America, we're lacking good police, good judges, and good prisons. There's been a crisis in the prison system in Latin America in the last three or four years. So that's a big problem. So we haven't been able to contain organized crime and to contain other threats that are coming to Latin America. Second, I will say it is, we have an, a, a structural problem. Latin, Latin America continues to be the single most unequal region in the world. The gap between the rich and the poor is, la is largest in Latin America. Every country in the world, Cuba, the US, Russia, We've been, it's, they have been problems in this income disparity, but no place, no region in the world like Latin America. So that's the second issue. The third issue will say is, I mean, we don't have any more this sort of society controls and individual controls because there's been, the family used to be very important in Latin America. And now, unfortunately, we're having a lot of uh, households with single parents, single mothers. Now the single mother is working, so the children are out there. So the family is not the same lately like in the past. We have problems with religion and, with, and we have problems with the school. Moreover, we've also been having a, a tremendous growth of middle classes. And unfortunately, the new Latin American middle classes, they want to consume as if they were wealthy, as, as, is, uh, as if they were rich. And unfortunately, they cannot get the consumption level that they aim to. And sometimes these individuals, they become corrupted and they, they, have, they, they are working in any place, but they are also doing some illegal stuff and it's affecting Latin America a lot. And fourth has to do, the four variable and the four explanation has to do I would say with drivers. There's three main drivers in Latin America that explains a lot of violence. Number one is drugs. Unfortunately, drugs 
nowadays are consuming Latin America. Latin America is not only a transit or a producing uh, uh, place for drugs, but now we're consuming drugs, and that is a driver of violence. Number two, alcohol. Young Latin Americans, they drink in a lot, and, uh, and alcohol is associated with a lot of uh, fights and with a lot of car accidents. And it's uh, in Latin America, unfortunately, because we have a rule of law. It's very easy to be 16-year-olds, 16-year-old, you know, you have to be 18, not like in the U.S. that you have to be 21. Here, when you vote, you can drink. But unfortunately, you, you, you're going to see this 15 years old, 14 years old drinking. And, uh, and I will say the culture of drinking in Latin America, it's, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's creating a lot of problems and there's very few restrictions. And finally, it's about arms. There's a lot of guns in Latin America, of course, a lot of guns in Mexico, a lot of guns in Central America, a lot of, of guns in Brazil, even though Brazil passed a law in 2005 of gun control, we co they continue to have a lot of guns. So this could explain you a little bit why we Latin Americans have become so violent. And this has become the single most important obstacle for human development and for Latin American well-being. To me, violence and Public insecurity has become a sort of ex uh, external debt problem of the 1970s and 1980s, which has become a huge obstacle for Latin American development. So now this is the very important uh, uh, challenge we're facing, and I will say that we have to try to overcome that challenge with a lot of international coordination and, 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 uh, and, and with a lot I would say, of, of imagination, because this is a very complex problem, and if you don't mind, I will stop here.